Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at Noon starts now. The exact track showing rain across southeast Michigan this noon. And we're going to begin right there because whatever snow you may have had left on your driveway is probably gone now. You're welcome for that. In fact, uh, the temperatures soaring into the 50s today. Brian Sherman is tracking it all for us. Hey, Brian. Hey there, Jason. Good Friday afternoon, everyone. Yeah, definitely a rainy day across all of southeastern Michigan, but let's think for a second where we were this time last week. Temperatures right around zero with blowing and heavy snow with wind chills of 20 to 25 below zero. I will take this kind of weather over that any time of day. Exact track 40 radar raining off to the north of the metro from Flint down to Waterford and then over toward Howell, then pulling off to the east of Ann Arbor heading toward the I-75 corridor from Gross Eel heading down toward Monroe. All of this moisture lifting off to the north and east, so we will keep the rain into the forecast as we head throughout the rest of the day. Tower cam over downtown Detroit. Plenty of cloud cover. A very soggy day as you're heading outside today. Down to 53 right now here in Detroit. 51 Ann Arbor. 52 right now working into Port Huron. And 53 right now as you're working over into Adrian. This moisture continuing to lift off to the north and east right into southeastern Michigan. So waves of rain will be the order of business through the rest of the day. We'll hold into the low 50s all the way into late this afternoon. Much more on the rain and when it ends, your full forewarn forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Six years of former President Donald Trump's tax returns released today by the House Ways and Means Committee. They confirm in detail what was summarized earlier this month by the committee. Trump declared negative income in 2015, 16, 17 and 2020. And in 2016 and 17, he paid a total of $1,500 in income tax. The release of the former president's tax returns are the culmination of a long legal struggle between the House Ways and Means and the former president. In a statement, Trump says he used depreciation of assets and other tax deductions to, in his words, create thousands of jobs and magnificent structures and enterprises. We have the details in full of those returns at clickondetroit.com. Over on Detroit's west side this afternoon, police searching for someone accused of fatally shooting a woman and stealing her car. Police released this video of a suspect approaching the victim, pulling out a gun and coldly shooting her in the chest. It happened Wednesday night around 1045 near Grand River Avenue in West Outer Drive. Tracy Golden was rushed to the hospital where she died. Police say the suspect stole her valuables and her gray 2018 Dodge Journey. They think the suspect may still have it. They want people to look out for it, and the license plate number is DYN1663. If you see it, you're urged to call 911 or the Detroit Police Department. Meanwhile, Detroit Police Chief James White has tested positive for COVID. The department says the chief is fully vaccinated with two boosters and has only mild symptoms at this point. He remains in command of DPD, but the assistant chief is stepping in to oversee ordinary day to day operations while the chief isolates. When the clock strikes midnight for the new year, thousands of Metro Detroiters face the very real threat of having their water shut off because a pandemic issued moratorium protecting homeowners behind on their bills that's set to expire. But as Nick Monticelli reports, there are some options to keep the water on. So yeah, there's good news and bad news. Of course, the bad news is that this all could be coming to an end. The good news is that the Detroit Water and Sewerage Department has a couple of options. Two options as long as you sign up ASAP. Tomorrow, everything changes for those behind on their water bills in the city of Detroit. An early pandemic order to stop water shutoffs expires on New Year's Eve, but there are options. First is the lifeline plan, allowing residents to agree to a preset limit on water usage of 4,500 gallons for a fixed rate. Second is the 10, 30, 50 plan, where you make a down payment of 10%, 30% or 50% of the past due balance, depending on how many payment plans you're already on in the past 18 months. The past due balance is spread over 6 to 24 months in addition to the normal monthly bill. DWSD Director Gary Brown says the goal of lifting the moratorium isn't to harm Detroiters, it's actually the opposite. DWSD is not collecting uh, approximately $40 million a year. And when we don't collect that bad debt, we have to pass it into the rates next year 
and you're simply hurting the very people that you're trying to help. Now, I can't emphasize this enough. The department is saying that people have to sign up for these programs before their water gets shut off. It's going to happen. So if they sign up, they can fix all these problems as long as they sign up and stick to those payment plans. We're in Detroit. Nick Monticelli, Local 4. All right, Nick. After a disastrous week, Southwest Airlines trying to get back to normal operations today. Out at Metro, there are no Southwest flights canceled today and only about 40 across the country as a whole. Mike Valerio is tracking the turnaround as the airline deals with growing backlash from loyal customers and the federal government. After eight days of a chaotic holiday travel mess, Southwest Airlines says flights are returning to a normal schedule Friday after a disastrous week and just in time for the busy New Year's weekend. This has been a crazy time. Of the usual 4,000 flights Southwest operates daily, only 39 flights were canceled so far for Friday, according to FlightAware.com, as the airline says it will resume normal operations. I feel... I'm confident. I checked like Southwest a bunch of times. I refreshed the app a bunch of times today, so I was like, we're good. Despite the much welcome relief, the damage is done. Southwest is facing growing questions about how its systems allowed things to go so wrong for so long, as the airline promises it's working to make sure it doesn't happen again. And the travel hassle isn't over quite yet for some Southwest passengers still waiting to get to their final destinations. We've been gone since uh, the 17th of December from Jacksonville, Florida. And there's still a big mess to clean up. Massive piles of baggage are still stranded around the country. As Southwest staff works to sort through all of these lost suitcases, including one belonging to Brad Mayberto's son, which took a vacation to Sacramento despite his son's flight getting canceled. Who knows when we'll get it back? Super disappointed. Meanwhile, the Transportation Department is renewing its warning to Southwest, saying the airline could face consequences for the meltdown if it fails to make things right for the thousands of stranded passengers. Hopefully they get it together. I'm Mike Valerio reporting. Well, you know what they say about the old saying, uh, you can hope in one hand. Uh, Southwest has some ground to make up on the new list of airlines, by the way, with the most on-time flights. Delta earned the top ranking in the report by Sirium, which crunches the numbers each year. Alaska Airlines came in second, followed by United and American. Southwest is fifth. Uh, you're probably thinking, uh, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Well, you'd be right. This data sample ended December 15th, so it does not include the more than 10,000 Southwest cancellations over the past week, so this will likely change. Kickoff for the Fiesta Bowl now less than 28 hours away. Number two, Michigan taking on number three, TCU at State Farm Stadium in Glendale. The Wolverines have been waiting for this moment since that loss to Georgia last year. They're seven and a half point favorites to beat the Horn Frogs. We'll see if it happens. You can join Local 4's Jamie Edmonds, Hobie RT, who's out in Arizona for our Chasing the Championship special tonight. It's only on Local 4 Plus. Again, we have a whole team out in Arizona ahead of kickoff. The special tonight gets underway at 630, and it's on Local 4 Plus. The Mega Millions jackpot on the rise again now at $640 million. If you match all the numbers, your cash option is up to $302 million. I won't tell you what the odds of you winning are. Let's stay hopeful at this point. And the next drawing is tonight. There have been 21 straight without a winner. We will have the winning numbers for you at the top of our newscast, Local 4 News at 11 tonight. Still to come on this show, a story of heroism emerging from the Buffalo blizzard. What one man did to save himself and several others and why he felt the need to apologize.